You got, Do I have eyelashes or anything? My hair looks awful. You gotta give them this. The whole, as a stylist, that wasn't my design, but it's okay. It's not zzz. Is it's it good enough? Good they look really zzz. I prefer <laughs> zzz. <laughs> All right. Hey everybody. Hello. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Phil. And I'm Jen. And we are Jen T. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I want to just kind of in introduce us. Yes, yes, yes. I want to yes. introduce I'm us because Jen. there's another For element. Edit, seriously, my name. <laughs> yes, and there's another element of Jen T which we will get to. Excited to be brewing a tea with you guys today. It's one of our sort of. Um, one of the categories that's lesser known, less common, a bit harder to come by, mm -hmm. and we're going to dive into it. If you've already guessed that we're brewing a yellow tea today, you are correct, so stay tuned. <laughs> I guess we have a shoot together for a while. Yeah, you jump in now and uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I, didn't, um, I did the handover very nicely, I'm sorry. No, no, it's good, it's good. Um, so the tea we're having is a yellow tea today. And it's, it's actually an experimental one made by Jian Li. And we're going to see how... The third part of Jian Ti, Jian Li Wu. Yes, brew. how is her skills in making tea. What? I always say her last name when I'm on video. When I'm <laughs> shooting videos, I, it's like someone would call me Phil Rushworth. Every single time they call me Phil Rushworth. So I don't know why I do that, but it's made by Jian Li, who is the third part of Gen Tea, experimental tea. I'm super excited to try it. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, if you're new to the channel, boy. <laughs> be sure to click the subscribe button, hit the notify. No, click the yeah, click the subscribe button, hit the notify bell, so you'll know whenever we post new content. We do all kinds of neat stuff. We have a series called Sunday Tea Book. We do how to brew videos, just casual brewing videos, which you can brew along with if you want. Tea travel and much, much more. So check that. Check out the rest of our channel. We got lots of great content. Mm, if you have a yellow tea, be sure to brew it up and sip along with us. Mm -hmm, get that kettle on. Well, let's start with uh, observing the tea leaves. Mm. So the first thing that I notice about this yellow tea is it's a, it's a style of yellow tea I personally haven't seen in a while. On our website, gentea.ca, we currently have two yellow teas and they're both, uh, they both have a finishing roast that gives them a really lovely flavor. But this looks, reminds me more of yellow teas from earlier in our catalog, Mengding Huangya we had in 2018 and another one, Hoshan Huangya. Mm. We had way back in 2015. The leaf is quite different looking, but it's still more of that greenish, has a very greenish hue, in, you know, a darker green hue. A with little some, bit like a malfoon kind of a mm, shape. Right? Mm, yes, a yes, that's a yeah. curly kind of. And a little hint of something really, like. A really sweet. Yes, like sweet. Especially if I was going to say corn. A little yes, bit of that like corn. If, especially if you're like, oh, it looks like a green tea. Mm. And you smell that, and yeah, I want to get this in the warm dry one, so... Yeah, really provoke the aroma. Mm. A little Ooh. brag about some new hardware we're sporting today. <laughs> if you're a teaware addict as well, leave a comment down below and tell us, uh, we'll, we'll provide support to each other. <laughs> oh boy, did you smell it yet? Yeah. Oh wow. It smells really lovely. Very sweet. Uh, that, that corn, sort of uh, sweet, very sweet corn. Um, a little butteriness. Yeah. Oh, boy. I wouldn't call that roasty, but you know mm. that it warms the temperature is there. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I, oh. I, I know what you mean. I wouldn't, it's not in the roasty domain though. It has that warm, I don't know. Oh, that lovely, sweet asparagus hint, but. Corn sweet, like roasted, yeah, buttery. Buttery. Yeah, a little corn. buttery, like that roasty yeah. you're talking about. I think I'm getting that as more of a buttery, like, oh, a, wow. like a melted butter style. I don't know if anybody melts butter on their corn on the cob, but it doesn't quite remind me of that. But it has this sweet smell of, oh, 
It's actually just very lovely. Mm. Mm. I have to say, usually if I'm... What? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> a silly big smile. Yeah, silly big smile <laughs> as I'm searching for words. Okay, okay. <laughs> just really hard to place that sweetness. It's Sweet doesn't quite do it justice because it's not pure sweet. It's like a... Like a, a not really a vegetal sweet, but mm. maybe it'll come through in the liquor more. Yep. Gorgeous color. A little bit messy pour. Let's pretend it's the guy one's issue, not yeah. mine. <laughs> well, we're, we're adapting to the new hardware. Mm. The new blue guy one. Oh, that's perfect. One guy one is uh, just two cups. Nice. The leaf shape is quite different from the other teas I mentioned though. Mm. I was thinking back to Mengding Huangya where yeah. we were actually on site. Like that was uh, actually my first tea trip when we were in oh. Sichuan to make Mengding Huangya. So you can, um, we'll put a link to the video down below or pop it up on the screen or however that works. You can taste this really early pluck. Yeah, wow. That's where that sweetness is coming from. I guess that sweetness that and the taste has what, uh, we call it. It's not a beautiful description, but it's like a chicken, chicken broth. It has that uh, amino acid, that mm. kind of a rich, xian, very xian. Really brothy, really. Right? Um, that's the. Oh wow. That's the taste of the early plot. And it's interesting you mentioned about how it still looks a little, little bit different than. Yeah, like a, it's similar to Mengdi Huangya or like um, uh, Huashan Huangya, mm. but there's difference. Besides, the process is quite different. The 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 plant itself is different because the previous two are small leaf uh, mm. cultivars, and this one is a big leaf cultivar. Ah. This is the same cultivar as uh, our uh, Yinghu Number no. Nine, the famous black tea. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. And the tricky thing with the big leaf cultivar is when you make it into green teas, a lot of times it's not vivid enough compared to a small leaf cultivar. Mm. By vivid, you mean like the, uh, the brightness of the tea? It's not yes. that the, the big leaf doesn't really bring that as much as the yes. small leaf does. Yes. Mm, very interesting. This is quite vivid. On the other hand, I'm getting... Right? Actually, pretty good. The sweet, the sweet that we describe on the aroma is still there in the liquor aroma. Yeah, you know, mm. plenty of that. Mm. This is actually an interesting topic to talk because we always say, oh, okay, right. one tea plant, you different process, you can make that into different teas, and uh, you can see mm. uh, certain uh, tea gardens are doing that. They have that, and they want to make all kinds of tea despite what their tea plant. But there's something in Chinese in tea term we call it shi zhi xing. Suitable for. It's like if I'm a kid who really suck at math and you force me to do math, well, I'm good at whether they say art, but you say, okay, art is useless, let's do math. It's not gonna work. Similar kind of thing with the tea. Like the small... Or it might work, but it will be mediocre. Exactly. You'll, you'll, be, you'll have a limit. Exactly, there's mm. a limit. There's a ceiling. It's so similar with um, tea, with tea cultivars, cultivars, right? Cultivars, right. Mm. Wulong, you want, we call that medium leaf cultivars. And a small leaf just cannot resist them, uh, cannot uh, sustain that uh, process. Mm. The result wouldn't be good enough. Mm. While the small leaf is really good with green tea, mm -hmm. especially. It has that uh, xian thing. Yeah, that amino acid that we're getting tons of. I just had a little leaf in the bottom of my cup. So I mm -hmm. ate it, I mm -hmm. chewed it up and ate mm -hmm. it, and it's full, full Very of flavor. Tender. Really tender. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, it's the leaf itself, so quite sharp. Um, not bitter, but really rich, full of flavor, like an explosion in my mouth. We, um, doesn't taste anything like a raw leaf, but it reminded me of your mother's trick when we're climbing the tea mountain mm. in the tea gardens. She has a trick, if you're thirsty, you just take a raw leaf and chew it because it makes, it's so 
quenching. It's so quenching and so um, it just makes you salivate right away. It's so full of flavor. Mm. Really full mm. body. That's interesting. Well, would, would you think this, when you taste it, do you think that reminds you a lot of a green tea? No. No? Okay. It doesn't... No. I don't know why though. Like it's not far from green tea, but it doesn't remind me of green tea. And it has a spice, a meat spice. It's, yeah, it's more meaty than green tea. Right? right? Even when green tea, which can also be really cyan and full of amino mm. acid, it, it brings the brothiness in a different way. This... Mm, this is a little, I would say, fatter, butterier in terms of fat. I mean, literally, like greasier, but not mm. Mm, not oily or slippery in the mouth, but thick. Right, Th right. You know? That comes from the cultivar, though. Mm. Not much of the the yellow tea process, but I do feel mm. like like it tastes. Sim <laughs> I still feel like it tastes similar to green tea, but you mm. you're like. A, Oh, this is there's a, some little twist in right. this green tea if right. you are really mm -hmm. used uh, familiar with green tea or using green tea as a criteria. Well, in fact, when we first looked at the dry leaf, my first guess was, is this a green tea? But uh, when we smell the dry leaf, right, right away, away we know it's a yellow, yellow tea. Yeah. That's a unique yellow tea sweetness. Yeah. I, yeah. I found that's pretty telling. It's a little bit big for my hand. It's a good size guy one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I like the size. I guess. fits my hand really nicely, yeah. but yeah, I can see it would be a touch big, but not overly. Right? It's just not overly. It just is. Mm. Uh, just when I like a tilted, super tilted, I can feel a little bit mm. uncomfy. Just I can feel something like you know the ideal situation with me is I don't feel my body part. I don't feel like oh I'm what. I'm yeah, you don't want to feel strain. Oh, right? I don't want to feel, oh, my wrist, I'm pulling the guy one. You know? Mm. Great aroma on the second infusion. Mm -hmm. How can I say? Mm. The liquor aroma is not like leaping out of the cup. It wasn't on the first infusion either. Mm. Um, that buttery aroma is a little bit more inward in the second infusion on the, um, on the aroma profile. But when I taste it, it's almost identical. I would say very consistent, gray brew. Thank you. But I do feel the change, the transformation of that sien a little bit more subdued while mm. the body of the the mm. tea. I feel like this uh, this brew really emphasized the the cultivar. Mm. You know that kind of body. That's uh, you can know it's a big leaf cultivar. I guess the weight of the the taste is different. It's not as strong mm. or light. It's just the weight of how this. Flavors to present. This is actually an experiment based on like our uh, Da Ye Qing. So it's okay. the same cultivar and the same factory and the same garden. Sorry, Ying Hong cultivar or? Yeah, they're the same cultivar okay. too. And Da Ye Qing is mm. the same cultivar. Mm. Oh, okay. It's the same garden. And uh, doing some experiment with uh, yellow tea to see. Uh. You can see actually a, quite a big difference from the leaf and the, the taste. Huge difference. I wouldn't have, uh, I, of course, I'm not as skilled, but I wouldn't have guessed either. Uh, of those were the same uh, garden. And it's really interesting to see that this leaf, how it stands up to the um, this more traditional yellow mm -hmm. tea making process. I, mm -hmm. I don't know, I have to say, I really think it's a success. Um, mm. Really full bodied flavor. Oh, it tastes really good. Yeah, it's delivering everything I would expect from a yellow tea and, uh, and you know, really? it, making me very happy, like it's really, 
delicious and um, it's a little bit too good. It's a little bit hard to describe. Um, well, it's well put together. You know, everything's kind of um, nothing's popping out. There's no real um, not one particular element that's dominating this experience. Right. Mm. You want to have a smell? Yeah, sure. <laughs> we got to shoot more video together. <laughs> do you think we should shoot more video together? Yeah, if you think we should do more <laughs> together videos, Jen's been doing tons of uh, solo ones lately. And if you think we should do more together, hit a thumbs up or my heart will be broken. <laughs> Third infusion. Mm, smells pretty good. Wow, still has that uh, profound sweetness. Yeah, on has the a little bit of floral now. Yeah. I, get, I didn't sense too much of a floral in previous infusions. No, I didn't really get any of that, but that gaiwan lid is bringing that, mm. that sweet floral, really sweet. And one. a little bit cool the temperature. Mm. So if you have a favorite yellow tea that you've tried in the past, leave us a comment down below with what it was, you know, and how you liked it, what you thought of yellow tea versus green tea. Mm -hmm. And if you've never tried yellow tea, let us know as well if you've ever heard of this cultivar. It is mm -hmm. a really, um, in cultivar, it is a, this type <laughs> of tea. It's a really interesting type of tea. Yeah. And I, I hear from a lot of people that are like, oh, yellow tea, I've never heard of that. I've heard of green and oolong and black. White, yeah. All the color-coded teas. Yeah, all the color-coded teas. Well, there's another one. Yellow. Very hot. Very hot. This one has a little bit more, I think, of that floral. That light, mm. I would think of a white, those wild, white little juicy flowers. By juicy, you mean those little fat, round, white uh, flowers, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. No, yeah, I can, I can decode. The, the chubby flower, but little ones. More ball-shaped. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Hard to describe, eh? Like, I do feel what you were describing in the earlier infusion, in the second infusion, the way the, uh, the way the, the body of the tea is kind of changing and it's still really, really full. Yeah, hard to describe, mm, but really. This. Wait, have a moment. This feels to me uh, less of those green tea, or white tea or yellow tea, those flavors. Somehow it has more of a unique, heavy, I like to call that starchy ones. Starchy mm. aroma. I think be, this also is the cultivar as a, it's a, a, was a, a combination with a poir as well. So it has a little bit that, a, you know, that a poir cultivar notes. Mm. The brood leaf really, how would you describe this? It's interesting because usually when I think of a starchy rose. tea, yes. I think of Not a sweet rose potato, rose. but this one doesn't, is more like yes. sweet corn starchy. Like it's really, yes, I keep yes. coming back to corn like a broken record, but it really does have that. Yes, but how should I say? If you talk about corn, I wouldn't think about like a sweet corn, like what you would buy in a grocery store, maybe what you guys are not their fun fun of like waxy corn. That's what I I think what uh, I mean like a heavier to the heavier right, side, right. not those light and sweet and uh, fresh those kind of a juice like a little corn more to the wax corn. In terms of the body of the tea, it has that. You mean yeast more like the Asian corn? The, yes. Yes. Yeah, that's the body of the tea, but the aroma for me really had that sweet corn, especially earlier on. It still has it a little bit. Mm. But now that for starchiness me, is coming out. For really have that the starchy. The starchy and it, like you yeah. said, it's not sweet potato or potato. That kind of heavy starch is mm. Mm. wax corn. Yeah. Um, in Chinese uh, supermarket, the, the, the label called out wax corn. Right. So I don't have a good term for it. it. Yeah. I just call it Asian corn. 
We call that a glutinous corn. Glutinous corn. That's what it's called. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really. Nya, 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 nya. What? You know, nya, 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 nya. <laughs> like you chew that. It just doesn't come off the cob. Like it's um. <laughs> anyway, if you've ever had glutinous corn, leave a comment down below. Let us know how much you love it. <laughs> you can tell he doesn't. Try the bottom cut here. Mm. This one is concentrated mm. sweetness. Yeah, that's really interesting, huh? It is concentrated. We put a good boss leaf, my mom. Yeah, there's a good amount. I put five grams. In the guy one, I figured the guy one size is quite large. Mm, mm. It may not be as large as I think though, because it is a bit narrow the and shape, tall. The mm. shape, yeah. So I may have gone a little, a little heavy. Mm -hmm. Liquor color is still really beautiful. Really, uh, that. Yeah. It's pretty clear. A lot of times when you mm. do, uh, because it's experimental, so honestly, I didn't have high hope. Because when my mom do experimental, we don't just, oh, we're trying to do this. Because uh, first we need to get to know the leaf mm. from that garden, mm. specifically what it is. So we do a lot of uh, f figure out the edges thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, put, you push in different push. directions, so there's lots yeah. of failure before you get to the road because yeah, you're looking yeah. for that. And because we need to know mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. its edges are. Yeah. So I'm pretty impressed. And with the yellow tea, a lot of times you will have really murky, really mm -hmm. cloudy kind of a liquid. Turpid. Turpid. A little okay. bit turpid green, but it's pretty, uh, like I would call that a nice yellow yeah. green, like the liquor colors. Pretty, and you can actually clear and pretty, uh, pretty. compare this one in the previous I did a video about uh, uh, I think the tea detective why I feel like that liquor color is not you know the yellow tea liquor color and aged and aged or stale the green tea their liquor color though all to the yellow side they're different the radiance is different mm. aged tea that yellow is different like if you were um, having a little bit more experience with the yellow tea vis-a-vis -vis, uh, aged uh, green tea, then you will start to notice when we all describe that as a yellowish green tone, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. mm. Still pretty consistent. Yeah, really consistent. No, I, she, I don't know if she, knit, she knocked this one out of the park. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <sighs> very different than the dieting we had. Oh, I yeah. Would say. Very, very different. Mm. And just in case some of you are new here and you're wondering if Jan Lee makes all of the teas on the website, <laughs> well, you never know. She doesn't. Um, they come from um, farmers and producers from all over China, That uh, many of them that Jan Lee has worked with. Mm. And that's sort of, you know, that's where she does get involved. And sometimes, like Jen was explaining, in, in visiting a garden and then pushing the leaf this way and that, you know, they do experimental batches, so she's not making scads of a tea. She's making an experimental batch mm. to push it maybe in the kill green phase, then another one to push the roasting phase or to do what she does. And it, an interesting thing, you can check out some of her other videos, but she also does a lot of chatting with the with the producer and the producers, because there's usually, there's often more than one person mm. involved, to normalize the language, right? Because she yeah. knows a bunch of the terms, technically what they are. But each village has their own way of calling it. And each person has and their own person. habit of how to make exactly. tea. Right? It is, it's pretty much, you have to learn it before you start working with it. Because mm -hmm. nobody welcomes somebody who just come here and tell me to correct everything I have been doing. Right, yeah. right? It, Personal so me, wise, it just doesn't work. Yeah. So. And so for me, it was fascinating, even though I don't speak Mandarin, to watch her go through that process 
working with them and chit chatting and, and taste a batch, make a batch, taste a mm. batch, make a batch. Really uh, fascinating. Well, this is it for today's yellow tea tasting. Mm. I hope you had fun as much as we did. Yeah, and if you want to try um, some of the teas made with the same cultivar as this tea, you can find them on our website. That was Da Ye Tsing and Ying Hong Number no. 9. It's always fun to do side-by-side -side comparisons, even though they're vastly different teas, knowing that they come from the same garden. Very interesting side-by-side -side tasting. Mm -hmm. um, super fun to do. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping.